Hello, I'm Tom Schmidt, Managing Editor with IDG Strategic Marketing Services, and today I have the great privilege of talking to Dr. Jane Reed, Head of Life Science Strategy at Linguamatics. Linguamatics is a world leader in deploying natural language processing text mining to help the pharma biotech and healthcare industries speed up the drug discovery cycle. Dr. Reed has extensive experience in life sciences informatics and has worked for more than 15 years supplying data products, data integration, and analysis to pharmaceutical and biotech companies. Hello, Jane. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Doing well. Jane, why don't we begin by giving our viewers a little bit of a background about linguamatics. So, linguamatics has been going for about 15 years, and we're a company that's always focused on text analytics as a solution um, within the pharmaceutical and healthcare industries. Now, as you know, across those industries, there are uh, a huge number of places where free text is a really valuable set of data, but it's really hard to access. In the, uh, what people used to do is just sit down and read and try and make manual, uh, manually put together all the information to, to create reports. Mm -hmm. But the volume of text is growing, the variety of text is growing, and really, um, search is not good enough. So we, we sell a product called I2E. And really what that brings to our customers is a very powerful solution for text analytics. Um, and if you think that uh, the differences between text analytics and keyword search, many, most people are familiar with keyword search, and it works wonderfully if you're trying to find an overview of breast cancer or where to go on holiday and that you know everyone's very familiar with that but if you're trying to pull together a set of information like all the genes involved in breast cancer then that's where it gets much more problem problematic because you don't just want to be led to all the documents that talk about genes and breast cancer you want to be able to get all that information in a structured form to fuel your analysis so text analytics tools, their key is not to take you to the documents, which is most search tools, but to take you to the facts. And from those facts, you can synthesize knowledge and ideally get actionable insights for your business decisions. So that's been the business of Ingramatics for the last 15 years. I see. Uh, let's dig a little deeper about some of the key challenges facing pharma and biotech today and where, and where text analytics plays a part there. So it's, a, it's an interesting world we live in, and it's a, a very rapidly evolving world, I think. And if you think of the way drug development has changed, where we used to be in a world where it's very much looking at a, a single blockbuster, and then you've got the revolution around the biological drugs, um, and now there's very many challenges with increased drug development times, regulatory pressures, so everyone's much more aware of the risks of drug safety, um, with the payer market changing, so mm -hmm. again, it's a big uh, change in emphasis on the need to demonstrate that therapeutic value to payers, which is a big difference. And then there's also challenges around, although the technological developments are fantastic, they also bring challenges. There's an increasing amount of data around all the sort of omics, which is, I think, going to revolutionize our healthcare. If you think of all the information coming through about personalized healthcare. Mm -hmm. A lot of that information, there's a, there's a lot more data, and again, a lot of that data is in text. Um, and the key to addressing many of these challenges is, is finding ways to really maximize your data access, mm -hmm. both from your structured data, but also from your unstructured data, whether that be public domain data or proprietary data. Um, and, you know, the, the common statistic is that over 80% of data is in unstructured text mm -hmm. um, and many of the ways people write things whether that's in patents or in healthcare records or in scientific literature it's not easy to pull out the nuggets that are going to help with those decisions whether that's around the real world value of your product whether that's around your regulatory compliance all sorts of different areas so while while text analytics cannot uh, it's not going to solve every single problem, it's going to play a part in very many problems because of the volume of text data. Got it, got it. 
Jane, what are what are some of the things that pharmaceutical companies are doing to reduce the time and cost of their of their clinical trials and getting a getting a drug to to the market faster? So, um, one of the you're, you're absolutely right. One of the sort of critical areas for drug development is the clin- the whole clinical trial process, and any way our pharmaceutical industry players can minimize pockets of time across that whole trial process is, is critical. Um, so there are bottlenecks for access to knowledge around site selection, patient populations, uh, who's the best principal investigator, who are the key opinion leaders in a particular therapeutic area, or from the physician's perspective, how do I make sure that looking across my patient population, I can pull out the guys with hepatitis C mm-hmm. and HIV and the BMI of XYZ, mm-hmm. all these different criteria to pull together the set that you need for a particular clinical trial. And again, it comes down to much of the data might be in structured form, mm-hmm. but there's a lot that's in unstructured text again. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had a really nice use case from one of our customers, Merck, and they were looking for a clinical trial site it was an expert in uh, gastric surgery. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had about, oh, maybe a dozen different criteria. So the ability to measure gut peptides, uh, not using staples, mm-hmm. um, you know, a whole, not be a children's hospital. And if, you, you, if you've ever used uh, any of the public domain clinical trial registries, putting together that kind of search would be very complex. Mm-hmm. But using a text analytics solution, you can use vocabularies. So if you're looking for diabetes or gastric surgery, there can be a, a number of different ways of, it, of using uh, keywords to search. So being able to use vocabularies, being able to cut across those different sorts of uh, records. And they found using uh, I2E that they were able to identify three ideal sites, one of which they, was completely unknown to them experimentally in the vision. Wow. So that's just a, a, a very simple example, but just being able to speed up site selection. Exactly, exactly. Jane, you mentioned um, you mentioned changing regulations earlier. What? Um, how are pharmaceutical companies addressing the bottleneck of, of regulation? So there are, I think again there are there are. I mean, there's just a, a huge number of different um, applications for the, the whole flow through where you can pinpoint different bottlenecks. Um, For example, one of the the key areas that cuts across many different areas of of regulatory compliance is making sure that your your vocabulary coding around uh, the MEDRA MEDRA dictionary is accurate. Mm -hmm. And again, text analytics can play into that kind of uh, of compliance. But um, we have some of our customers uh, using uh, text analytics in a workflow mm-hmm. to be able to help with regulatory document submission. So if you think of when you're submitting a, a regulatory package to the FDA, mm-hmm. you're compiling data from uh, many different departments, uh, many different areas, um, safety, chemistry, pharmac- pharmacology, mm-hmm. and you're trying to compile all these documents into one into one um, submission, one dossier. And there's a lot of cross-checking, making sure, sure. that the particular data here is reflected well here. Um, and we've had some really nice work uh, workflows put together for some of our customers, where they're being able to pull out quite specific errors, being able to highlight them in a the document. So um, just for example, where um, within a table, mm-hmm. um, different uh, values aren't calculated properly. And again, it's the sort of thing that if you're a manual reviewer, having to take that table, maybe, you know, copy and paste it into Excel, work out what the values are, you know, it's just tedious, and therefore it's error prone, and therefore it's costly. And if you make errors, then, you know, if if the FDA sends back your submission package, then that delay can, can cost millions. I mean, exactly. you know, for, 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 for blockbuster successful drugs, it's exactly. a huge amount of money. So any step in the process where you can just 
enhance the manual review or pull out specific er errors or basically speed it up and make it more effective, then it's, it's really valuable for our pharmaceutical customers. Exactly. Jane, these, these examples are so concrete and, and so vivid. Can you talk a little bit about, about how pharmaceutical companies are, are making the best use of, of real-world data, how they're accessing and making use of it? Oh, there's a, uh, that's a really interesting question, Tom. But the, there's a real buzz right now around real-world data, mm -hmm. um, both in, in pharma and healthcare, understanding the real-world impact of therapies on patients. Not in your clinical trial, not in your control environment, but out there. Mm -hmm. And it can, real world data, if you can access it and analyze it, it can shed light on real clinical effectiveness, on safety profiles across that much broader patient population. Um, it can be used to understand patient reported outcomes, um, even start looking at managing your product reputation mm -hmm. uh, and so forth. And again, a lot of Real-world data sources contain free, free text, unstructured text, mm -hmm. which prevents easy an analysis. Um, and again, a, a really nice customer success story. We have customers who are looking at, uh, in my mind, a, a, a really interesting source of real-world data. And they're looking at the call transcripts that come into their 1-800 numbers. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, Pfizer, for example, they get over a million of these call transcripts per year. And if you could take those and understand the trends mm -hmm. that those call transcripts are showing you, um, whether that's around uh, from simple things like, oh, I, you know, I took my pill with another pill. Mm -hmm. Will I have a, you know, and, mm -hmm. then, and now I have a headache. Right. Or um, I crushed my pill. Will it be okay? Or... I've, I've taken my pill, and do you know what? My knees feel so much better. You know, so so there's a whole lot of valuable data there exactly. when it's expressed in the way people talk. Yep. Might use a whole range of language around what the drug is, around what their adverse event if it's an adverse event, and again, being able to take all that and have a a systematic, comprehensive process for understanding for 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 taking all those call talk, taking all those calls and assigning them to say, okay, this is about this drug, yep. it's for diabetes, but they're showing this kind of adverse event. Wow. And being able to pool that information means that um, the, the, the product marketing guys, the guys in charge of, of real-world effectiveness, get a huge amount of value. From, these, from this information, this real-world data. Exactly, and as, as you know, we're just going to be collecting more and more and more of this data as time goes by, so, so that's going to be a challenge, finding that, finding that, that, that real value, finding that needle in that haystack. Um, that's really good. Yeah, that phrase, the needle in the haystack, is, is perfect because a lot of search will take you to the, you know, if you imagine your 100 haystacks, a lot yeah. of search will take you to the the one haystack and say, in this haystack is your needle, <laughs> right. and text analytics will be able to not take you to the haystack, but hopefully take you to the needle. To the needle, exactly. Um, Jane, I think we have time for one last one last question. As you know, uh, Linguamatics and Hewlett Packard Enterprise recently uh, hosted a webinar webinar about how organizations can maximize the value of their their data assets. Can you talk a little bit about Linguamatics' work with uh, HPE? So HPE, um, I mean, they're they have expertise and real domain knowledge in data management, data hosting, particularly around you know data security, which is a big issue mm -hmm. in, in healthcare and in some of the pharma data. Um, and we are the market leaders in NLP in text analytics for um, again for that same domain for the mm -hmm. pharma and healthcare domain. And so while there's uh, so there's a real synergy when they're going into to their customer base and saying, okay, well, you're looking for, uh, you have a particular need around um, a, a, a healthcare informatics suite. Mm -hmm. So they're looking at the hosting, the data management, the data security, and we can supply that little, that the, the niche bit that brings the power to interpret, for example, the healthcare records. So it's very much a very synergistic, um, interactive kind of portfolio. Got it. Very interesting. Well, that's about all the time we have today. 
Dr. Jane Reed, thanks so much for taking time to talk about your work with Linguomatics. It's been really, really interesting. Thank you for the questions and thank you for your time, Tom. It's been great. Great. For the Business Value Exchange and IDG, I'm Tom Schmidt. Clap.